Harden ability. In metallurgy, the hardenability of a steel is a key parameter, and when we talk about hardenability in steels, we are often describing how deep into the steel we can achieve hardening. If a steel is described as having a low hardenability, this will mean that the steel will produce a shallower depth of hardness. When a steel has a high hardenability, it will be the same hardness throughout the thickness of the product. Highly hardenable steels are more important in large components. Hardenability is not to be mistaken for hardness. When describing the hardness, we are often looking at the microstructure achieved during cooling. For a given steel, it can be assumed that the quicker the cooling rate, the greater chance of achieving a harder structure, and if that steel has a high hardenability, this hard structure will be present deeper into the thickness. We can increase the hardenability of a steel by adding elements like manganese, molybdenum, chromium, nickel and boron. When we add these elements, it increases the hardenability and this will enable us to achieve a harder structure deeper into the thickness. The ability of the hardness to go deeper into the thickness is because it is easier to achieve a harder structure at a slower cooling rate. The structure of a steel can be perlite with ferrite or cementite which is the softer structure, martensite which is the harder structure and bainite which is in between. Looking at the continuous cooling transformation diagram, if a steel has a low hardenability, ferrite and perlite transformation will be shown in the upper left hand side of the diagram, meaning it will be difficult or even impossible to form martensite. If a steel has high hardenability, transformation to martensite will be shown at the bottom right hand side of the diagram, meaning that a steel will fully transform to martensite over a large range of thicknesses.